know how it goes, all right. Hi guys, Mad here, and welcome to my first ever unboxing video. In this case, it is a booster box of Model Pony trading card game, collectible card game, CCG. Um, I ordered this uh, via mail, and I'm very glad it came today. Three days, three days left um, to uh, build, finish building a deck, or make a bit deck stronger for the first tournament in uh, Germany, in Munich, uh, aside from the uh, pre-release where I actually participated as well. So, uh, very nice, a personal thank you, written, hand written on the, uh, on the uh, order sheet inside of it. Um, yeah, I can't wait to open this. So far I was very lucky. I drew, um, I bought 10 boosters, or basically I got 10 boosters, two from the pre-release, no, three from the pre-release, and I bought seven more, and in those seven boosters I pulled two ultra rares, Twilight Sparkle, also Avenger, and Doctor Hooves. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Wasn't it didn't mean any harm here. Yeah, it really is just Doctor Who's is basically useless if you don't have two. So rather uh, hoping for another one in this one. Um ultra rare are one every 13 boosters, so there should be three of those in here. Um well, who knows? There are very strong ultra rares. There are uh, auto rest which can break any opponent when it comes on the table. I like Twilight Sparkle also Avenger, but right now I'm not playing her in my main deck uh, because I don't really like to play the Twilight cards right now. I'm gonna see if it's going to be different later on. Anyway, um, so I was uh, a 2 out of 10 or 2 out of 7 even of boosters I bought for the uh, for the game is extremely good for uh, a draw of uh, um, ultra rares. But there are many rares in here too. There are four rares. I don't need four rares, I just need rares. But um, I'm gonna see. Uh, this should bolster my deck heavily and it should fill me up on the comments and uncommons, which I'm lacking. Um, so, let's see what's inside. Okay guys, um, this is the uh, Premiere display. It's from the Premiere edition. The new one is coming up in April. So, um, of course, this is the only one available right now. And um, I'm going to open it up now. It's quite tightly, tightly sealed here. Strong. Ah, here we go. It's on the, on the where it's uh, laminated shut. It's open there. there it is. So um, I'm not going to show you every common and uncommon or something. I'm just gonna. Open this up, there we go. And uh, there we go, that's how it's supposed to be, like this. And I'm now going to open the booster, show you important uncommons, rares, foils, of course the ultra rares. So, first booster. A little bit. Twilight Sparkle team organizer. I don't have. I have. I have her once. I can fix it. I'm a green. Yellow power sprite. Strongest of the common. Uh, gyro. When you play the card, search your deck for an event. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. That can be very dangerous. It needs three Twilight to play though. Oh, Fluttershy animal team. Oh, Fluttershy is such a strong uh, color. I'm really trying. Uh, hoping to get Fluttershy into my right now pinky deck. Marvelous Chapeau, which has a um, an error. Uh, it's not one; it's minus one. It was a rotate, right so um, that's a print error. And let's discard it. Oh, this one is so strong! Draw three cards for one action token. This is going to be in my deck three times if I draw all the uncommons. So I'm going to put them on top here. This booster one. Oh, you can see it. Here you can see. It. Twist. Snips and snails. Will you look at that? Plus one to confront this card's problem. It's not that strong a rare because it's quite costly. But Applejack foil, stubborn. 
If you win a face off, this card of random card, Applejack foil, that is a good one. Starting problem. Here's your invitation. I really need the uh, dismiss card so much more. And phlegm, of course. So many phlegms. I have no phlegm so far. I have so many phlegms. This should change today. But this is great. And we're going to put the Applejack foil on top of it. Of course, we place uh, the, uh, a common card. So even if it were a foil or an auto rare, or a rare foil and so on, it will not replace your other cards. It will replace a so the uh, common card. So the ideal booster, which I do want, is a rare and an auto rare. Uh, do two of those. Night Watch. Uh, during face of flip an additional card. Strong card, good booster for a, an Applejack deck, which I'm not playing. Yes, well, uh, full Steam. Four and four. I dislike this rare, actually. I don't think it's, it's, it's worth to be rare. It's an uncommon, really. This way, little ones, I don't have that problem. Oh, if you play this one, uh, owner can move a friend here for free. Oh, quit a friend. What went wrong? Oh, brilliant. Uh, only for the picture, really, mostly, but this is so cute. And bunny breakout. Oh, right. Main cure, caretaker. When you play this card to problem, you may move one of your friends to the same problem for free. The very uh, quit a friend, it's so strong a card. Pony napped, it's a rarity problem. They frighten Watch in Awe. And the Wild Manticore, I like this um, opponent. This is a strong uh, Tunnel Maker. And uh, if I can draw three of those, which I hope I can, I will probably play three of those or three of those cards. It's a Scootaloo. Exhaust is required to play a Tunnel Maker for free. Basically, saves you an action token. Focus study again, maybe so for babies again, on the other thoughts again. A little bit. Coco Crusoe. Uh, when we reveal the Bokman as this card's problem, an opponent discards two random cards. This is an extremely strong rare for an Applejack deck. You know that you play for three without anything, so it's a it's actually a booster for Applejack. And uh, if you reveal a top maker of this card's problem, an opponent discards two random cards. This is too strong, basically, for a rare. Uh, Wrapping of Winter, Tango Kofur, and Cloud Bursting. I have all these, but Coco Crusoe is a very, very strong wear, in my opinion. Two random discards is just a very powerful sprite. Bright Bulb. When an opponent's character is related to this card's problem, you may exhaust this card. If you do move that character, it basically moves the the way, plus it's a booster for uh, Twilight. Good one. It's okay. Pearl Sprite Spawn. A rare troublemaker. Um, this gets permanently stronger. And with all, uh, with eight power, it frightens our opponent's friend as a problem and dismisses itself. That is a lovely rare. I like this one. We'll play it definitely. And we've got an apple anti sauce. Anti apple sauce. It's an uncommon foil. And three other uncommons, as I said. Emergency dress order. Starting the Kitter Cavalry. Um, that is a strong booster for uh, face off for Fluttershy. And the Wonderwork card. So Paris by Swarm. Where Troublemaker is a nice one. Perfect. Perfect. F stop, I already have him. Exhaust this and play one to search your discard pile for an event to put it into your hand. It's a very nice uh, it's a nice fetch card for rarity, but look at the ultra rare here. Philomena. Bird of a feather. It makes all your other characters critters. All your other friends are that problem. This makes basically every pairing with Fluttershy decks brilliant. I love to have this ultra rare. This makes my uh, this makes my uh, anything playable with Fluttershy cards. Anything. This is brilliant. Bully and the Beast. Uncommon. I'll shine them all. It's a problem. It's an uncommon. Fierce must be faith, which is a good card. Choose a troublemaker face. You can move two characters at home to two different problems uh, for two. So you basically save two for the movement. But this Philomena. Is the auto rare first auto rare of this display, and this is a brilliant thing. And it's the tenth booster, I believe. Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it's the tenth booster. Picnic lunch, Fluttershy rare. Play to your home resource, and um, three of your Fluttershy friends have one problem. Flip an additional card during the face off. It's nice for a. Or Fluttershy deck, basically. But I believe there are stronger cards now. 
Otherwise, uh, the uncommons are Batman of Winter, Tank of Fur, and Club Wasting, all of them which I already have in abundance actually. Solar Wind, a Rainbow Wear. Play a uh, Pegasus Fence of this card's problem, you make exhaust this card to gain one. So it basically gives you, if you play only Pegasus, uh, it gives you uh, action tokens back. Uh, Hardhead, have Fire, Fashion Feast. And all salt. I know all of them, and I know I have all salt at least three times. So the team effort. Uh, in the face of you have Applejack of Twilight, flip an additional card. If you have Applejack and Twilight, flip two additional cards. This basically commands you to play Applejack and Twilight if you have those rares. None of which uh, play Twilight though. Featherweight as a rare. Is this not a rare? During problems face of involving this card, you open a flip an additional card, but it ignores the one with the highest power. So basically, you have a double chance to kit him over a bit. Uncommons are it's a twister, uh, duck and cover, and flam. Finally, uh, they exhaust uh, characters at his problem. Manticore stronger, I believe. But we're gonna see how the playtesting goes. So Spike! Swift! And um, you can give him one more power for one action point during your main phase. Uh, too much power, finish line. I don't like finish line. His cost for his effect, basically only having Swift, is too little. Spike. This is really strange. This is not... It's pushing me a little bit into Applejack and Twilight, but it's really boosting Rainbow and uh, Fluttershy with the Ultra Rare. And it's not boosting Pinkie Pie at all, which is basically what I really want to play. Fluttershy. Fluttershy Wear, Guidance Counselor. When an opponent receives at least one action cost, and you can exhaust her to give him away so to steal his action points. So then Spike, take a letter and a Timberwolf. And that I say it here. Uh, it's random, and you dismiss an opponent uh, friend involved in the face of of his face off, and it's really playable for Pinkie Pie, for for Pinkie, yeah. But let's get this party started as a foil. Yes, uncommon foil. Good uncommon foil. Very good one. So, this is a Pinkie Pie booster. Foil rare, foil, uh, a rare and a foil uncommon. And Ahuizotl, Troublemaker villain. There he is. Uh, at the end of each Troublemaker's phase, the player moves one of the characters some of this recurrence. So if you don't beat him, you lose two. While you, uh, if you challenge him, don't beat him, you lose two. If you don't uh, challenge him, you lose one tough one to overcome. And the Trixie hat. Uh, you can, for only one uh, action token, move a character home. And downright dangerous, a dismiss card. So this is this is a good booster. Villain, a dismiss card. Falcon. Uh, when you move him, you move one of your critter friends to the problem. Uh, if you move into a problem, you move a critter friend to the problem for free. It's very cheap for a Fluttershy card. One went wrong again. Oh, lovely. Two what went wrong. And the falcon. Pinkie Pie. When you play this card to a problem, dismiss him with one of friends as a problem. This is strong. Four. You put it on a problem and your strongest opponent is going. And Rainbow Shine. That's a common. As a foil. Another Flam. Fiddle Faddle. Octavia Recaller, basically. When you play this card, look at the top two cards of your opponent's deck, put them back in any order. Good. Okay. Vision to the future. Way better, basically. And swing into action. Also a nice card. But um, Vision to the future is actually the strong one in this one. Straighten up and fly right. And there is four more cards under this. If you have Twilight Spiker or Fluttershy, a flip edition card. If you have Twilight Spiker and Fluttershy, I should two cards. Twilight and Fletcher cards, and we have a Granny Smith, but she is Granny Smith. That wasn't wasn't this a common? Uh, it's a common. It's a common foil. And there's a Kitta Cavalry once again. Stand still. It's a rare. Uh, play of an open. Yeah, that returns for for zero. It returns a move. It basically kills if you have a two action point move. It kills two action points of the opponent. Plus it's a five. It's a good foil. But we've got Rarity Nest Fever. I have her as a f uncommon already. But it's a four uncommon. Rarity Nest Fever. And downward dangerous again. That's my third one. That is good. 
Three Downward Dangerous. That is really good. Sweet Apple Acres. Play to your home, exhaust and pay one to force opponents to, to choose and discard a card. It's basically a continuous one. Uh, a each turn discard a card. It's basically there. There is a, a staff in uh, Mental the Gathering that does the same. Sunny Rays. When you play this card, look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Too expensive for twelve. Charged up. Engineer Pony. When you move this card to a problem, look at the top two cards of that problem stack and put them back in any order. Plus it's a booster for Pinkie Pie. It's okay. Working together. Applejack and Fluttershy. Double wear. Creme de la Creme. Have not seen this. That's too strong. Too many bandages. And the horror, the horror. Dismiss an opponent's resource. Sunny Smiles. <laughs> this uh, syncs with uh, the discards of uh, Applejack decks. Back here where you began, move an opponent's character. This is Discord, basically. And Ship Shape, the Ultra Aware. When you flip a card, exhaust this card, ignore the cost power, and flip a new card. I believe this is the weakest of all the Ultra Awares, basically. It's cute, um, because it does be on it, and it's an Applejack card. But for an Ultra Aware, for the right this video, I believe this is not that strong. Good Hustle. Choose a Pegasus parameter, it gets two power to the end of the face off. You can play this in even in the, any uh, any uh, Fluttershy card. Then there's a hard hat and all salt again. Yeah. A certifice, rarity and Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Philip edition two additional cards. And the Critter Cuisine, which is strong. Really strong, I like this one. And Rainbow Dash Weather Leader, which I have as a foil because of a pre of the previous like a lot. Rare find. I know this one already. I have this one already. Um, it's uh, plus one power for each of your opponent's characters. It's a very good Twilight card, actually. Has been shown that. Two bits is a rare. Play to your home. Discuss this card to reduce the cost of the next card by two. Especially one against two. And the rare file. That's a rare foil. And we just drew it. And another here's your invitation. I think that should be all dismissed card three times. Lilac Links. Exhaust this card to choose a friend with a resource and remove from the pace on the friend gets minus five power. Uh, so somebody who has a resource on it, basically against Pinkie Pie, uh, is losing a lot of power. And the yay. Each of your characters and opponents better get one power. Um, I think I have this twice already. This is a another uh, play Fluttershy. Uh, the big guns, Rainbow Dash or Pinkie Pie. Something I right now play. Um, okay, I dislike these uh, forcing you to combine two cards actually. Because bring forward, studious, weakest of the abilities. You can look, you gain one, but you don't gain more than one. Well, I guess it would be broken if you gain more than one. And plus two power for each opponent's character is a problem, so it's rare find mine by two. And a Fluttershy Caretaker, and another let's get this party started, that three let's get this party started. But there's only two. Golden Oak Library, yeah, there is no auto rare in this box anymore. So two auto rares, one is Philomenia. Uh, exhaust uh, gold, uh, one card, uh, one, three, top three cards, one event in your hand, and we're going to basically a library of a name. Wanted, needed, another yay. Okay, this guy is okay. So. Yeah, that was my booster box. Mixed feelings about it, actually. I can see uh, several tendencies, but we're going to analyze it later on. Uh, right now, I have to go back to work. Okay, um, I'm back. And I uh, just sorted out all the cards, which I want to talk about. And um, that's some uncommons here. Mostly those are the wares. Um, my uncommons are off screen here on the stack, and these are my commons are back in the box, so um, put in there. So um, the first cards I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about how I'm planning to play this. Um, are these three? Um, the Pass by Swarm. Um, putting up a picture then to show you the card. Pass by Swarm. Uh, at the start of an opponent's turn, like a face, this gets stronger. At the, always. So, um, this card starts as a 4, but uh, cannot be dismissed as a 4 because I flip it in my turn. 
and uh, so it's going to be challenged as a 5 already because it's at the start of the Tollmaker phase so um, yeah it's it's just uh, a no-brainer it only gets one point if defeated it basically blocks the problem for my opponent if I draw this early enough he's gonna have a hard time to dismiss this it's basically blocking him for four turns um, and it frightens all opponents at his problem if he can dismiss it uh, so it's two points per uh, uh, friend he's trying to uh, flip then uh, it's not characters, it's friends, so the main character is not affected by this, but that's about it. So it's a no-brainer, I will play it. Ayazotl is a villain. It's a not a strong villain, but it's only one of two villains, actually. And um, it blocks the problem for both of us. Uh, it's hard to dismiss, uh, because if you lose a challenge, you lose two cards. You have to move one home, because you lost against him, and you move, have to move one home, at every end of the problem maker phase, so uh, even if he doesn't challenge it, he has to move on home. And um, the uh, it's, it gives two points, but it's a five strong. And normally I should be able to stack my deck uh, for face off. So uh, I believe this could be a strong card in any way. This is a uh, card I really want to play, and uh, so I'm going to play it. Then I've picked up the two uncommons, which I will definitely join this ranks of to play in the Survive Manticore. Uh, because you flip two cards against uh, against him. Well, if, if you play against him, you have to uh, face off two cards instead of one card. As I said, I should be able to stack my deck for face-offs. And so, this is going to be played. That's four. And uh, these four are joined by three yellow power sprites we have here, it's already in decks in, in the so we have uh, three yellow power sprites, power sprites one, Arizotl and wild manticore twice, so this is let's put the villain in front to show this so this would be the seven turbo makers I would play of course I would have wished for Nightmare Moon of course, who wouldn't have? But uh, it's not an Hyper Moon. It's an Iwazotl. We're going to see how this ends. The Parasite form is a, vice, is a nice pick, actually. Okay, so let's uh, talk about these cards. I dislike them um, because they would force me for a combination. The big guns is um, uh, Piggy Pie and, uh, Pie and uh, Rainbow Dash. Straighten up a flyback is. Um, Twilight and Fluttershy. Team effort is Twilight and Applejack. Assertiveness training is uh, Pinkie Pie and Rarity. And working together is Fluttershy and Applejack. So it's actually of each of those force combinations, there is only one. Five in total. So there is a big po um, probability that I will not play a single one of those. Um, there is a possibility that it will play, for example, all that befit the faction, which in any case would be, you know, two Applejack, um, one Twilight, for example, uh, one Rainbow Dash there is, and uh, there are two Pinkie Pie and two Fluttershy each. So that's a possibility. We're going to see, I'm going to see during deck building, I'm going to put them aside here, because I am really not comfortable about these. So, let's look at all the wares and uh, the auto wares and so on. So the first deck I want to pick is this one. Um, this is unusual that I can basically eliminate and immediately uh, color. So, um, here we have Rainbow Dash to the Rescue. It's a promo foil. It only exists as a promo card. I got it from the pre-release. Um, I can pick the flipped cards into my hands. It has Swift. Uh, one of the cards I flip I can put into my hand at every face off involving this card. It's four for three. So it's a face off dual card, but it is rather expensive comparatively. Then we have this ultra rare, which I pulled out of a booster of one of the ten I got earlier. It's Dr. Who's Unblinking. Dr. Who's when he's played in the discard pile, you may search your deck for a Doctor Who's friend, play to your home, frighten, and shuffle your deck. 
It's extremely expensive with five and three rainbow, but five, and it has four strength. The uh, downside is I have only one Doctor Who's. So this would be an option if, uh, for example, the opponent lies a rare parasite, which he will, because everyone will play the rare yellow parasite. And um, I have to discard this card, then I can immediately pick one from my deck, put it into play Frightened, pay the two to flip him, and have uh, four Rainbow Dash Power on board. Um, it's unlikely that I will uh, have any chance to play uh, to get the, doc the second Doctor Who's. So, uh, at least, especially not until Saturday. So, then there is Gotta Go Fast. Um, it's a promo foil, which I got from the pre release, but it's actually a rare, and it's a good rare uh, for one uh, action token and two uh, Rainbow Dash. You move one of your characters to a problem. It's a good, one. good card. So it's a good card. But then we come for what I took from this booster box, and it's only four Rainbow Dash rares. Solo Wind, um, which basically gives me action tokens if I play Pegasus Pants to his card's problem, so it has to be a combination. Um, Scootaloo, who uh, basically spares me one action points because I can uh, play a problem maker for free if I exhaust him, or her in this case. Uh, Spike, who is swift, has no power unless I pay an action token. And uh, two bits, which is a resource at home, uh, which reduces uh, uh, the cost of the next card I play this turn by two, costs one itself, and is dismissed during that. It's not uh, permanent, so I have to would have to uh, take back the resources. So this combination of seven cards, it contains an ultra rare, but it's a worthless ultra rare unless I get a second ultra rare of this card. Then it's going to be strong, but as it is. This will not be played by me. I will not play Rainbow Dash. So, um, I was already doubting Rainbow Dash in that case, so I will not play Rainbow Dash, and that means that uh, these can be put aside. And uh, we put these cards closer. So, the next stack I want to look at is this one, the Applejack stack. And this one is a tough one, because um, uh, I'm not unsympathetic to Applejack. Yeah. Rainbow Dash is not going to be played, so I'm going to move this over here. So I'm not unsympathetic to Applejack. Let's put Echo Jack here so you can see her, that she is in dispute here. And um, why am I not unsympathetic? Simply because I already got from my booster three... Applejack wears. One is Gala Applebee, which gets uh, one power until end of turn if I move her to a problem. So I can play her to a problem immediately, and then if she uh, if the problem is resolved and she's moving back home or any other way, if I move her for two, I get two power. It's okay, but it's 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 a support card basically. And then uh, I have two War the Nellies, which uh, is a reaction. If one of my friends is dismissed and I have three Applejack on board, it costs zero action tokens, I can put that friend into my hand instead of putting it into my discard pile. So, and then I got a quite strong six card turnout for um, Applejack in this booster box and this display. And the strongest one, of course, is Ship Shape, who is an ultra rare. Um, but he's three and two Applejack for two, and I can ignore a flip and flip another card in a face off uh, at any time. It doesn't need to be a face off with him. I can do that any time. So basically, it means I can, uh, you know, always take the better of the two. But there's a downside to that because I already want to know what I'm drawing before I go into a face off. That's normally what I want to do. So this is potentially much stronger than I actually thought. I thought it was just with him. But that is potentially stronger than I thought, but it's not um, really convincing me. And then there's full steam. It's four for four. It's a rare, yeah, but it's four for four, so it does nothing else. So it's, well. Um, 
Then there's Night Witch, which is a very strong uh, dualist face-off. Flip two cards involving this and uh, during face-off involving this card. Yeah, that's it's okay. Um, then Coco Kuso, who is arguably the strongest one I I do. When you reveal reveal a token maker, this card's permanent opponent discards two random cards. Two cards. At random, if I switch a problem, I'm going to say, this is uh, evil, really evil. Then there is the uh, the staff, basically, Sweet Apple Acres, which forces opponents to choose and discard a card for exhaust and paying one action token. And then there's Sunny Smile, who, who works very well with the other two, because when an opponent discards a card, this one gets plus one power until an turn in the stack. So, if uh, I activate Sweet Apple Acres and switch a Topo Maker, um, she immediately gets three more power and would be power six. So I can see this. I can see this. But the synergy isn't that strong here, in my opinion. This is my opinion, of course. Yeah. Um, and so I will, for now, move Applejack away and say I will not. I will most probably not play Applejack. This is a harsher decision than I would think it would be because, you know, there is some synergy there. But um, personally, I also looked at the uncommons and so on, and I am not convinced that I will pull this off. Who knows? Maybe I will. Could be. Anyway, what's left? Um, Twilight, who is the strongest of the main characters. Rarity, Fluttershy, who is, with Rainbow Dash as the main character, the strongest of the main characters to play, and Pinkie Pie. Here we go. So, let's talk Rarity. Let's talk Rarity. So, um, here we have a very interesting thing, because I already pulled three Rarity Rares in my previous boosters. Big Shot, uh, who can score points whenever a Total Mega Assist card's problem is revealed. It might be yours, it may be the other ones. Lotus Blossom, uh, which uh, stacks my card deck, basically, from my discard pile. So if a card is discarded, and this one is uh, confronting a problem, I can search my discard file for a part and put it on top of my deck. So either I draw it next turn or I can use it in the next face off. And then there's F stop. Um, exhaust the card and pay one to search your discard file for an event and put it into your hand, which synergies very nice with Pinkie Pie, for example. And then we have those I drew during this booster box, and those are five. Uh, no, four. It's another F stop. Then there is the foil wear featherweight during problem face offs involving this card. Problem face offs, not terrible mega face offs. My opponent slips an additional card but ignores one of the flipped cards with the highest power and it's a 3 for 2, so it's also a booster. I call them booster because you can boost your own color with it without having to, need, without needing the color. Then when you play this card, the top two cards on your opponent's deck and put them back in any order. Uh, a fiddle faddle, a fiddly faddle is basically a one-time effect. It has to be played. Um, after that, it's just a two-card, while you need two to play it and two rarity already on board. So it's not that strong. And stand still. Play after an opponent's character has just been moved. Return that pair to the original location. This is a rare, this is a good rare, good event. Uh, it costs nothing except for having two rarity on board. and It's a strong uh, five power. So it basically uh, thwarts your opponent's uh, tactics and uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a possibility. However, the rares together with the uncommon and common depth of Rarity. Rarity as a main character will not be played definitely. Um, she will not be played. As a support, I might test against her, but I might switch to Applejack, because Applejack is, in my opinion, stronger. Especially with the rares I got, and the ultra rare I got. So I might test against her, but I will not play her in the tournament. Which leaves these three stacks. Twilight Sparkle, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie. 
Now, we are going to first discuss my favorite pony, Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie has one downside. I only drew two Pinkie Pie wares beforehand. A salt cake, which is a resort I play at home for two. And when the face-off begins, I can put her on top of the deck, and it's six. So this stacks for face-offs. It's a tad expensive, though, with the two action points to stack for a face-off. And then there's Surprise. Surprise is surprisingly difficult. I've played with her already, so I know that. When she comes into play, I can... When I play this to a problem with a face-up troublemaker, I can turn that troublemaker face down. So I can solve a problem with her but only once, because this effect is one time when I play it. She is rather expensive with 3 and 3, and uh, she has only one power. So, let's check on the cards I got from the booster, and this uh, from, from the display, and this is also not very much supporting me, um, but the cards themselves are not weak at all. There is Charged Up. She's a booster. You can play it for three action token and get two uh, Pinkie Pie, so you don't need any Pinkie on board, which I will, if I play Pinkie as a main character, uh, I would have Pinkie on board already. When I move her to a problem, I can look at the top two cards of that problem stack and put them back in any order. So if I'm moving to an opponent's problem, I stack the worst of his two, and the easiest for me to solve, and I can stack mine for the better one of the top two problem cards, which are coming afterwards. This is continuous whenever I move her to a problem. And, well, she's an earth pony. So, um, and let's look at snips and snails. Rather expensive. Four and three for three power, and the opponent needs plus one to confront this card's problem. Um, this might seem difficult, but in practice it has shown that this is not as uh, difficult to overcome as I thought it would be. And um, we're going to see. And the 4 cost is basically on the upward level, upward scale. Um, then we have Pinprick, one of the strongest I could have pulled. 2 and 4 Pinkie Pie, for Pinkie Pie should be solvable, 2 is cheap for 1 power. It's random, so in any face-off with this card, when I flip a card with 1 power, I ignore it and flip a new card. Always. So this is not 1 power, this is actually 3 in a face-off. It's only one of solving problems. Because 3, because it can never be 2. It can never be a 1 card power. And when I uh, um, win a problem face-off involving this card, I dismiss an opponent's friend's involving that face-off. So in a problem face-off, uh, which, uh, which I win, which he supports winning by random, um, if the opponent loses it, um, he loses a friend. <laughs> Permanently dismissed. It's going to be in the discard pile. So this is very interesting. And then there is Pinky Responsibility Pie, which I would have hoped to draw a second time, but I draw it once at least. She is expensive with 4 and 2 power for the 2, but whenever I play this card to a problem, dismiss an opponent, find that problem. So if I play her to a problem, the strongest opponent of my, uh, um, strongest friend of my opponent is going to go immediately. No downside. So, I play her, she is only 2 power afterwards, but it's a dismissal card. So, this is this is uh, very interesting. And the uncommons are strong with Pinky. The wares I lack. I lack wares, and I did not draw an ultra rare. However, Pinky power ultra wares are not that strong. Liar Heartstrings is about the strongest of the two. The other one is cheap, but, you know, ultra wares are hard to get. And you want cheap cards more often than once in your deck. Pinkie Pie is definitely a factor. Her dismissal ability, her ability to draw cards, is not to be trifled miss. But there we come to this display box, and this display box basically wants me to play these two. Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy. Why? Twilight Sparkle as her ability, studious, home limit only four, and uh, any events flipped uh, can be put into my hand instead of the bottom of the deck. 
she is of the main characters probably the one which I would consider the um, hardest to actually play um, as a main character. If you can pull it off, that's a different thing. But Fluttershy as a main character um, has a home limit of five. She gets plus one power while a critter friend is at the problem. And the state of a face of involvement this card, she can move a critter friend for free to this card's problem, which is just very, very strong. As a main character, Fluttershy is not to be trifled with. This is very strong. Um, so, I would probably never play Twilight Sparkle as a main character. But, then we look at the cards I already drew for her. And I only drew two cards. Clarity uh, sleeves. Two cards for her. But one is this one. Twilight Sparkle Urza Vanquisher. A ultra rare. Which is extremely powerful. While this card is at a problem, I may exhaust it and put it into my hand. If I do, I move two opponent's characters home. So for three, I de deny him about four movement points, or three if one of them is swift. And I can do this immediately. Plus she's studious. If she wins a face-off, um, I get one uh, action token, and she has a four power for three. This This is incredibly well made ultra rare. This is a very good ultra rare. And we have Rare Find, who is extremely hard to overcome. He needs two Twilight, but only one. Gets one power, plus one power for each opponent's character at the problem he is on. And then we look at this. My booster box, which gave me a whopping seven Twilight rares including two more rare finds, one foil, one normal. So it would play three rare finds, which would make it very hard to overcome uh, a problem, which are very cheap to play, very, very quickly to bring out. One spring forward, which is a rare find, which is more expensive with three for two. But um, she has studios as well, so if he wins her face off, I get one action token. And she gets two, two power for each opponent. And uh, then we have Gyro, one for one, but if I, when I play it, I can put an event card into my hand from my deck. So it's a tutor, actually, and uh, very, um, it's replacing itself as a card, basically. Then there's Bright, um, Bright Mob, which, as a reaction, when an opponent's character is played to this card's problem, I'm mean, exhausted to move it away. If it's played there, I can move it somewhere else. So, thwarting the uh, possibility, plus it's a booster, 3 and 2. Then there is a Sunny Race, which is the weakest of all of them I've, I've just shown. When you play this card, look at the top two cards of your deck, put them back in any order. It's an owl. Well, it's a Pegasus. And then there's the Golden Out Library. Resource at home, it's a location. Exhaust us and pay one, reveal the top three cards, put one event into your hand, the other cards on top of the deck. So, <laughs> I must say, Twilight is, as a support card, it's, it's, it's extremely strong what I've pulled here. Out of these boosters, really strong. And then there's Fluttershy. Why is Fluttershy an issue? First of all, because of her main character ability. The only rare I drew for, for Fluttershy so far is Beaver and Beaver Tea. Uh, he can exhaust, I can exhaust it to dismiss resources in the home of uh, a character. He's 3 for 3, so he's not that, it's not that special. But then there's this the ultra rare, the second one of this display box Philomena, which turns on a problem card all my other friends into critters during a score phase. And then we have the synergy with so many Fluttershy cards. Um, for example, this main cure all uh, where who is a caretaker, she gets plus one power with at least one of my critter friends. And I move uh, critter friends to the same problem for free. The thing is, for example, if I put Philomena in a problem with many non critters and um, play this to a problem with. If, if I uh, play this to another problem, to the other problem, 
I can move one of the critters that Philomena turned into a critter over here. It loses the critter trait here, but I move it for free. Yeah, so that is a possibility too. And then there's Lilac Links, um, which uh, dismisses the uh, resources on the face off. Uh, uh, we saw, uh, which dismisses, uh, well, not dismisses, but it reduces the power of a friend with a resource on it uh, doing in a, doing a face-off. It makes it minus five power if I put this one power card into exhaust. Aware of Fluttershy, when this opponent receives at least one, when my opponent uh, at least one action token, I exhaust her and remove an action token. Also, it's three for three. That's not bad. But uh, this basically steers the opponent resource. Then uh, this one, uh, Falcon, when I move this card to a problem, I can move one of my critter friends to the problem for free. As I said, the same thing with Philomena. If Philomena has turned non-critters into critters, I can move it, despite them being, for example, non-critters at the new problem. And there's Picnic Lunch. And when I play it in my home, um, with three of my Fluttershy friends I had one problem, I flip another card at the face of the problem. So, um, Fluttershy with her main, main ability with that uh, ultra rare and also a good stack of uncommons. Uncommons are, um, for example, Yay. Yay is a very, very fun uncommon. Not only because it's uh, reminiscent of one of the cutest scenes in the entire series, one has to just say so, but also because um, it's uh, a, a card which uh, almost always gives you a um, an edge around the uh, during the face-off. And uh, the, the yay is, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to overcome, as I, as I see here, it did not have a single, oh, there it is, I had a single yay before. Here it is. So, um, if you put a uh, if you if you play a, a yay to doing a face off, it's for zero, and each of my characters at an opponent's form gets plus one power to the end of face off. So this makes it very easy to break an opponent's uh, uh, face off uh, trouble face off. And critical cuisine is also one of them. It's a resource asset, and. Um, I play to my home, and when I exhaust this card and pay one, all my critter friends get plus one Fluttershy for the start of the, until the start of my next turn. As I said, it syncs with Philomena. Philomena does sync this. So if Philomena is turning non-critters into critters, they get Critter Cuisine bonuses. So the synergy of the Fluttershy cards are extremely strong. And I have three yays and at least two Critter Cuisines now. Let me check real quick. It can be done quite quickly. So, and here we are on the upside down part of the. So, let's check the uncommons. These are uncommons. Um, oh, yeah, and there's this Critter Cavalry, which you should also take into account here. Yes, um, so that's basically it. I have two critical cavalry, two critical cuisines, two the horror, and three yays. Um, so the horror dismisses opponent's resources. Critical cavalry play after you flip a card. This card has plus five power. And then there's yay. Each of a character of an opponent's problem gets a power plus. There is a Fluttershy, and uh, she when played. Also caretaker, so for critter she gets bonus. But uh, the next card I and the next friend I play, uh, Fluttershy friend I play, has one less action token when I play this card. So, um, so the uncommons are very strong together with the rares of uh, Fluttershy. So why is Pinkie Pie still on this? This is definitely a play. Twilight under Fluttershy card, so Fluttershy main and Twilight under, which also would work with, for example, Straighten Up and Fly White, right, which is a Fluttershy and Twilight card, and uh, Wire Guidance, which is one of the cards I only have twice. I only do another one, not two. 
So why am I shying away from playing this combination? There's only one reason. Look at this face. Look at this face. Because of Pinkie Pie. I want to play Pinkie Pie as a main character. This is not smart gaming, what I'm saying here. This is not smart gaming. Smart money is this one. Smart money is Twilight under Fluttershy. But I want to play Pinkie Pie. I really do. And um, this might cost me a couple of games, actually. But I want to play Pinkie Pie. So the only question I have is, can I play Pinkie Pie over Fluttershy? So play Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy as a support? Or am I stuck with Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle as support? That's basically the only question that I'm having here. Um, here's a synergy I see in both tactics. Um, of course, if you would play now Twilight and Fluttershy, this is a given. Twilight and Fluttershy would be the perfect combination here. She is so strong. Twilight with her all their her rare gem uh, cards and so on is so strong. And the also Avenger together with Fluttershy and her ultra rare and the Philomena. Under Fluttershy as a main character. This this is a game winner actually here. So why am I uh, playing Pinkie Pie? Yeah, simply because I want to play Pinkie Pie. And this is not... This isn't Magic the Gathering. This isn't poker. This isn't winning for all, uh, on all costs. Simply because I won a My Little Pony tournament is not really something to brag about. But I will play test, And I will play test Pinkie Pie against a Twilight Fluttershy combination. And I will test Pinkie Pie with Fluttershy and will put in Pinkie Pie with Twilight Sparkle. If I believe that I can beat a Twilight Fluttershy formation with my Pinkie Pie deck, then I think I will be well off. I doubt that this would be beatable so easily. You need strong cards. Winged Wonder, for example, to do that. But this lacks dismissal of friends. Twilight Sparkle has extremely strong report cards. Fluttershy has a movement of critters that's downright dangerous. And... Uh, yeah, Twilight has extremely strong friends. But Pinkie Pie has dismissal of other cards. So the thing is, this would be a dismissal deck. Pinkie Pie over Fluttershy. I can dismiss, let's say, each one of these cards dismisses one. Three, six, seven, eight of my opponent's friends. Then I can stack with um, Vision to the Future and a salt cake, I can stack for uh, duels as well. Plus Pinky herself is random, if she's flipped. And um, some of her Pinkie Pie's uncommons and commons have random. So uh, drawing a one card, even if I can't stack the deck, is basically impossible. And Fluttershy dismisses resources. This one in my opponent's home. This one, any one of my opponent's uh, resources, it strengthens my own cards by saying uh, each uh, critter friend gets plus one Fluttershy, while Philomena turns everyone into a critter, for example. It moves quickly, move her and a critter comes with her, uh, move him and a critter comes with him, uh, move her and a critter comes with her. And uh, the thing is, she would move one too, but I cannot play Fluttershy as a main if I play Pinkie Pie as a main, you see? That is the problem here. So yeah. Basically the situation is like that. Um, smart money is this one. Heart is this one. So the question is, what do I do? Can I get some Pinkie Pie cards in trade before the tournament? Is one of the big questions I'm saying here. If I can get some Pinkie Pie rares here, which I lack, if I can get some of those, we're gonna see. Some Fluttershy rares, of course, would be the safest bet. But 
This is a fun game. It must be fun games. It must be fun to play. If you cannot play for fun, this, if you can play this game for fun, you will not be happy playing this game. Yeah, so this is basically the thing. I uh, would have a good chance to win a tournament with a Fluttershy under, over Twilight Park, Sparkle, but uh, I cannot resist the smile of Pinkie Pie. And it also means that I, um, due to the ultra rares being only twice in a display box, um, I uh, am thinking about getting another display box, mostly because I want to stack up on where stack up on wares. While the stranger thing has happened that I have three of one wear of Twilight Sparkle, and uh, yeah, I need more Pinkie Pie. The uh, Pinkie Pie, Pinky Responsibility Pie, if I can take care of one more of her into a uh, into the deck, that would uh, strengthen my dismissal uh, possibilities. And um, yeah, it's of course it's uh, basically uh, unavoidable that I would say that uh, Pinky is a support character in this edition. And we're going to see what edition, uh, what the April brings with the additions. But basically, it's right now. It's looking like Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, or Pinkie Pie over Twilight Sparkle. And I would love to play Pinkie Pie over Fluttershy. Um, the thing is, these do not combine at all. So uh, Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy is a combination. Pinkie Pie and Rarity is a combination. Pinkie Pie and uh, Rainbow Dash is a combination, which is wanted in the game. Twilight and Applejack is a combination, and uh, Fluttershy and Applejack is a combination. But the Pinkie Pie neither combines with Fluttershy nor with Twilight Sparkle. So, this would make dual cards out of the game. And uh, basically I would probably play Assertiveness Training in this, because simply, if I have Rarity or Pinkie Pie involved in my face-off, um, it means that uh, if you have a, a Pinkie Pie friend and a Rarity friend, or a Pinkie Pie main and a Rarity friend, or a Rarity main and a Pinkie Pie friend, so this uh, does not mean you have to play a main character of that. It, of course, could be just two uh, named characters of that, but there is nothing that uh, has Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy at any time. So this would basically make flip two cards for one, uh, for one instead of flip three cards for one in any case. Three cards for one would not be possible with these wares. So, um, Pinkie Pie, uh, Pinkie Pie over Fluttershy is going to be my first try because I would love to play that. Um, but Twilight Sparkle with her uh, gyro, who puts events, Pinkie Pie dismissal events. Just want to say that this is the same thing. Golden Ock Library, one revealed event. This could be a Pinkie Pie dismissal event up uh, uh, into your hand and stack the rest. And uh, spring forward, three rare finds and a Twilight Sparkle. Hard to beat and removes opponent's friends. This does not uh, combine very well, actually. So if you have removed two of my friends, uh, this one gets lose, loses two power and this one loses four. But you always have to remember there are two problems here. Twilight Sparkle removes it from one wear a find and the other one seal the others all the time. So yeah, this, is, this is extremely difficult. I'm gonna see. But I think I have a possibility to at least have a couple of very fun games with this. And um, yeah, let's see uh, how this uh, turns out in the end. So. I hope you uh, took something away from uh, this display box opening and f presenting of now my entire basically playable collection of cards, of rares mostly of course, but uh, playable collection of cards. And um, yeah, I hope, uh, well, I hope to play against you one day. You know, everyone who's uh, watching this and considering to pick up the game, if you can pick it up cheaply actually. I would definitely recommend it because it's really fun to play. This is not a 
do a game like Magic. This is a fun game. I play Pinkie Pie as my main character because I want to play Pinkie Pie as my main character. This is not about winning. This is about having Pinkie Pie in my deck. As a main character. Not only as a friend. Because I want to play with Pinkie Pie. It's like playing Black and Magic. I always play Black and Magic. But Black and Magic is... N right now, Pinkie Pie is black by dismissing so many creatures. And dismissing so many friends. She is basically black. Pink is new black. <laughs> and black is new pink. And uh, the thing is... Who knows what comes in April? The first uh, expansion comes in April. I will get a display box of that as well. And I might get another display box of those. I have still have to think about it. But... Um, you know, we're gonna see. Gonna wait and see. So, see you guys around. Bye.